You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. If you're looking to improve the performance and return on investment of your marketing, then you have come to the right place. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this Marketing Focus podcast, and it's very, very cool to have you tuning in. This is the last of our September focus on improving your conversion rate, where we've looked at lots of different ways that you can improve the performance of your website and some of your marketing, because of course, the better your website works, the better all your marketing results become. Now, in today's episode, I'm talking to Lucas Walker about live chat because I think it's an underappreciated way to improve your conversion rate. Now, a little more warning here. Um, He will be mentioning Gorgeous, the company he works for a fair bit, but it's one of those topics where you just have to talk about a tool. Otherwise, the whole thing just gets too wordy and complicated. Now, in today's episode, we've lots of tips that you can use for live chat and to improve the performance of it, and also some of your other customer service channels too. All of this is going to be about giving your customers the support, the answers, the pushes towards buying that they need in order to get those orders placed and thus improve your conversion rate. That's going to include who should be manning your live chat, automations you might want to run, how to optimise the performance, how to take the lessons from the live chat to improve the pages on your website, where and when to deploy it, and a whole host more. We even got into using customer service to improve the performance of your Facebook ads, would you believe it? Well, look, we're going to meet uh, Lucas in a second, but before we do, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for email and SMS messaging. Whether you're launching your e-commerce business or taking your brand to the next level, Klaviyo gives you the tools to get growing faster. That's why it's trusted by over 38,000 e-commerce brands. Build your contact lists and emails that pop and create marketing moments that build valuable customer relationships over any distance. Get started for free today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan to create your free account. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Today, I'm chatting with another improving conversion rates expert. This time, it's Lucas Walker. Lucas has been involved with online marketing and selling for over a decade, including running his own e-commerce store for five years. In recent years, he's focused in on the world of turning customer support from a cost center to a revenue and conversion driving activity as part of his role at the leading e-commerce help desk provider, Gorgeous. Hello, Lucas. Hey, thank you so much, Chloe, for having me on. I know it's late. Uh, for the listeners listening in, I can uh, uh, appreciate that you're recording this right before your dinner. So I imagine whatever's cooking up in the kitchen is smelling pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to have to set my game up, not just uh, for you, Chloe, to keep you engaged, but our listeners as well. So hopefully there's a lot of uh, really tactical advice that that your listeners can implement in, in their stores as we head into BFCM, but also... Uh, hopefully you, you learn something new and maybe if I'm lucky, you, you'll be entertained a little bit as well. I hope so. I can currently smell the ribs my boyfriend is already eating. Uh-oh. So yeah. <laughs> you know, stomach. I was recording a podcast yesterday and I sent the, the guests some ribs on Uber Eats. Are, are, are there some ribs coming my way? You, you can see I'm wearing the Stubbs barbecue hat I got in Austin, Texas. I'm a little bit of a barbecue aficionado my, uh, myself. Uh, well, these probably wouldn't live up to it because these are from the supermarket. So let's I know, not. Yeah. Yeah. I turn into I go from zero to Gordon Ramsay real quick when it comes to judging barbecue. <laughs> let's let the listeners know a little bit more about you, Lucas, and your your love of ribs, maybe. But how did you get into this world of helping people improve their conversion rates? Yeah, I mean, it's when I was in university in the late two uh, thousand, like. 09, um, when social media was starting to get a little bit of traction as, as a possible marketing vessel, and I, I entered a contest at school. I created a um, like a campaign which I got paid 500 bucks for, which they're still using a lot of today and still stands up, which is which is nice. Sometimes when you go back and revisit old things, you're like, well, yeah, maybe a, 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 that was a good first try, but I, but it was impressive. And then uh, I, I cut my teeth in social media monitoring. I've always done a lot of uh, marketing and software, either sales marketing, uh, just really on that um, that front. And being a merchant myself, I use a lot of those tactics that, that I'd use on the B two B side to, to grow uh, to grow our store. And then um, just as you grow, sometimes things don't work out, but we were able to 
to use a lot of the tools in the e-commerce space, including Gorgeous, who, who I'm, I'm with now and uh, who I'm helping bolster their marketing team. And I was just so blown away by the product and the level of integration. And it just, it truly felt like it was something for e-commerce merchants at the first um, the first setup. I've used all of the, the other ones. I don't need to say their names. We know who they are. Uh, if you are on one of them, we'll, we'll actually buy you out. That's how much we know the impact that we can have on, on businesses. We'll, we'll square up in a new year. Uh, but Gorgeous will buy you out if you're with a competitor. Um, it was that passion and true understanding and wanting to to help entrepreneurs like myself that I saw in Gorgeous that I thought, you know what? If i got to go back uh, into marketing, maybe I should stick to uh just sort of something that I really, or go and join a company that I really believe in the product and the team. So what I really want to switch to you about today is, is live chat, because I think it still surprises me how many e-commerce businesses, how many e-commerce websites do not have a live chat functionality first off. But kind of more importantly than that, it's I find a lot of e-commerce businesses still see the the customer service element of which live chat should be core as a cost center. You know, they see it as a necessary evil of getting the job done rather than as a sales generation tactic. So for anyone who's still seeing it that way and who's maybe already got got some kind of live chat installed, what are the key things to do to flip it from necessary thing we have to do, necessary task, necessary overhead into something which is going to improve how many sales we get through our website? Yeah, absolutely. So there, uh, l- let's unpack everything that you just said. Why aren't more people using live chat? Because it's still pretty novel. And the good news is that for people who do use those new novel channels, you have a first mover advantage. Look at people who didn't worry about tracking it and just sent pr- just product to Instagram influencers in 2014, 2015. One of my biggest regrets is that, that I didn't do it. When shoutouts were free, people were happy, and it was just driving up sales. You know, that deteriorated quickly and the prices went up. But if you were early, you had an advantage. Um, so I think that that's why is even on e-commerce in general, we're still in very early days. So you're taking someone who's already an early adopter and then an even greater subset of those early adopters. But, but let's look at it. I mean, there are a couple of kinds of stores. One could just be pure commodity based. If you can make money in profit and you don't need live chat, then it doesn't make sense. Don't, don't worry about that with your business model. Like we just have to accept that there are perfectly fine businesses like that out there that probably made more money than I ever did. So like, I can't, I can't rag on you for that. But if you are using live chat right now and you're feeling overwhelmed saying, well, my, my CX staff is already uh, underwater, I don't want to add more, let's look at a few things. Uh, and I'm going to be very gorgeous heavy here just because I know our product feature is way better than anyone else's. Other tools might might have it. I, I don't mean for it to be a gorgeous pitch. It just inevitably end up well. So uh, before any one says, well, the podcast is really good. I wish it wasn't so good. <laughs> I'm going to talk with people who paid my bills. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, it's, uh, Lucas, I give you full permission to do that. Because thank you. I just, otherwise, it just becomes a little bit, if you can find a thing that does this, and then it just becomes a nightmare. So I'm perfectly happy for you to talk to Gorgeous as you go through this. On the basis of everyone out there, that you may or may not be able to do it with other things. We're going to acknowledge that up front, but this is going to be so much easier to listen to if we just let Lucas talk about Gorgeous. So go for it. Thank you, Chloe. I just I spent too much time on on entrepreneur subreddit. And it's like everyone's like, oh, well, "Why are you just self promoting?" Because that's what I know, and not just me, but everyone who shares anything. So, um, so let's really talk about that. One is: Are you tracking the revenue generated from those conversations that happen pre-sale? So we give this to you in order right out, right out of the box. You can go to the revenue dashboard, see which agents are driving those sales, and then use that to, to segment. And this is just a, a really good tip no matter what. If you're launching anything, focus close to cash. Because if you can't convert what's close to cash and figure out those early leaks in the bucket, you're just going to have a mess all the way up at the top of the funnel. And so focus. Maybe just start with the, the chat campaign on your cart page and on your support page. So you can see see both, contact us. Then if people are engaging and you are seeing those conversions, maybe back it up so it's on the product pages or the collections page, or and then back it up onto the homepage or the blog and change that messaging for the various stages of the funnel. And uh, my response is, is always the same, and I, and I still don't have an answer, is if you have customers who are viewing your products, wanting to ask questions about that, how is that bad for your business? What's the negative impact of responding to them? Completely. And I, I love the fact that you've you've 
you've given us that kind of easy entry into it there because I think a lot of people think you turn on live chat and it just takes over the website. But of course it doesn't. You can go, we're just going to put it in the places where we know we've got bounce problems or we know we've got people at that end point of the buying stage. And that way you can take control over how much tra- how much noise you're getting from it, how many messages you're getting from it. And then I also love the fact, and this is something which, which I find bizarre that more people don't do, is tailoring the message to the page the person's on. Yep. You know, if you were going to walk over to someone in a physical store who's just come through the door, you're going to ask them a completely different question than if they're sat at the till waiting to be served. It's like Exactly. It's crazy that people just have that that can I help you across the whole thing. It's like oh. Exactly. And think of your store as a store and not a vending machine. So when somebody mm-hmm. first walks in, you would say, "Hey, have you ever been here before?" And they say, uh, oh, yeah, I, I come here all the time. And you say, great, are you in our loyalty program? You get free stuff? Like, that's a welcome message. That makes me as a shopper mm-hmm. want to engage more. If they say, well, no, 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 I haven't. Oh, cool. Here's our story and why we started it. And you can start there to, to entice that brand, especially as competition is heating up and up and up and products are more similar than before it's a story of the company of here's well yeah it looks the same on amazon but it's actually not here's what what makes us different here's what you're supporting here's what we the brand believe in so there's a lot there that you can um that you can do just on the welcome page and again the product page same thing let's say we're we're in a bicycle store just because bike stuff can get pretty complicated and expensive quickly you can be looking at a saddle that's to, uh, 20, 20 quid or 400 quid and they look the exact same. So you can have it say, it say, Hey, what are you, what are you planning on riding for? And if somebody says, oh, I like to commute to work once a week versus I run Ironman triathlons, that's a drastically different purchase that you're, that you're going to, to have. And if it's somebody that does those triathlons and you know, your customers, well, this person probably go is part of a club or anything. So then you can, can work through them. We actually had one customer decathlon, uh, during COVID, they had all. They had to close all their stores, and so for a lot of um, retailers that have multiple store locations and a website, if you have a hundred, if you have ninety nine physical stores and one website, you don't have you. You no longer had a hundred stores. You had one. So how do you deal with that increase of traffic? People want to return things, etc., uh, and go from there. And that's the other thing too: is if people are asking about a return or something, what can you do to resolve it? That's not just returning the money and losing the cost of goods sold. Is it a gift card for a future purchase? Is it a partial refund? How are you managing that to to save that revenue? Because it's just as an entrepreneur and as a founder, there's just yeah, missing sales sucks having to, to run out of inventory when see people say notify me when it's in stock. There's always a little bit of, oh man, I wish I had more. But there's nothing worse than, than refunding. Giving them back money you've already collected. It's terrible, isn't it? It's a horrible, horrible feeling. It is. Um, you mentioned about tracking the performance of the live chat and tracking the performance of the different agents, which brings me on something I've I've heard before in the world of live chat and tell me if this is right, this is wrong and 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 so forth, is that if we're putting live chat in place for the first time and we've got like someone who is awesome in our customer service team are answering the phone, they are probably not the person we want to be driving our live chat because we different people, it's a very different skill set to picking up the phone and talking to customers. So who would you pick to run the live chat? Well, first and foremost, I ask my team who here likes to work live chat. Um, that's the first thing that I would do. And then secondly, I'd probably ask, so, so who grew up on uh, ICQ or MSN Messenger? You, you want to uh, <laughs> do that now? Um, but it, I, I would just ask the team, first off, find out who wants to do it. And then from them, uh, segment based on, on their performance. And I mean, you can have different things and go performance only. Usually if somebody's a high performer, they're going to be pretty good at it. But I always like to, to find what, what channels people do prefer. But it's also important to, to mix up the channels that people work because just the experiences are, are different and it can be very monotonous or tedious to only work live chat especially if you have more than one chat going at a time sometimes you just need a break and it's nice to power through some emails but also where where is your queue are you overstaffed on on wednesdays do you have a lot more coming in through through uh emails which is another um 
another gorgeous plug of a feature we update we launched recently was uh, just sort of busiest hours. So as you're scheduling your team, you can predict where they are. And one of the coolest things to me is um, with with COVID and just so much more ability to work from home, it does make it a lot easier to to have a flexible workforce, work with a partner, or even um, employ people who are maybe if they can't go into an office or they're looking for work from home opportunities, you can do that as well. And it's just, it will make it very easy to have staff when you need them. So you're not paying for, for seats you're not using. And you mentioned Decathlon earlier, which I thought was a, a really good example of a company, both who has that huge wealth of customer, not of product knowledge that the customer wants to tap into, you know, they're not just selling I don't know, cans of Coke or something. They're selling something a bit, bit more in depth. Yeah, like let's say it, it's a kayak. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm on a website, I see, oh, cool, it's 200 bucks. And I buy it, and it's like a, a, an inflatable thing. Like, what, what the hell? Uh, I, I don't like that. I, I wanted to spend like 1,500 bucks and get something good. I don't want to spend 5,000 bucks and get something off insane, but I wanted to spend a, a little bit of money to get something good. Yeah. And you, and you want that bit of advice. Yeah. And people don't regret spending money. They regret bad value and not getting what they wanted. But with a, with a company like, like Decathlon and with stores being closed, are you I would assume we're seeing a lot of those excellent customer services people being shifted. You know, who are usually physically in the store, showing people how a kayak works, how a tent works, etc. Shifting them onto live chat and targeting it so it only pops up on their area of expertise. So you bring up such a, a great point, Chloe, um, that I totally that I totally glossed over when I, when I was being all uh, all hippie, ask, your, ask people what they want to do. Um, something they'll probably say is, well, I love kayaking and I work in the kayak department. I don't know anything about mountain bikes. I, I don't want to deal with chats related to mountain bikes. So route based on product in question as well that people will, will know. And maybe it's a service question. Maybe it's... Um, and we're starting to see this with the super early adopters now that stores are opening up a little bit more. If it's limited, it can come in over SMS and then just sending an actual picture from your phone of what the what the product is. So really, it, it's no longer what you think of as a customer support center with a bunch of cubicles and people with headsets. Thank you for calling it. Thank you for calling us. This is Lucas speaking. Your call is very important to me. It may be monitored for assurance and liability purposes. And what can I help you out with today? It's not like that. It's, hey, uh, I need some shoes that will look good with these pants. Can you send me some options of how they really look? Because, um, and again, this is just going off on a little tangent, but but a great way to reduce your customer support strain and really turn it in, out, reduce it being a cost center. The best support ticket is one that you don't have to respond to. So if you can show through your product images ways to use the product, how to unbox it, uh, what it will look good with, et cetera, then, re- then focus on that to reduce your team's support load ahead of time, but then also be flexible to see what you can automate. So if you don't need to answer those same questions again and again and again, set up some uh, some auto responders or some auto replies. If you see people keep asking about um, choosing a kayak for large unsalted water, create a few auto replies for that. Yeah, and it, uh, you you bring up another good point, which is of course the the joy with many of these these tools that happen on the website pre purchase is they give us data back, which enables us to improve things. So as it doesn't lead to a call in the first place, which I think is one of the best things about live chat is that is that we can you know it's there sat on the product page, and the if, if five people are asking you exactly the same question about that pair of shoes, about that I don't know table and chairs set. Then you add that to the product page, make it clear, add the photo, just like you were saying. Then all of a sudden you've improved the conversion rate of that product. You've reduced the number of inbound calls. And by by getting everyone to pay attention in the company to what's happening with live chat, you can make huge leaps and bounds forwards by giving the customers what they want, which is going to improve those conversion rates. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we mentioned email and we've mentioned um, live chat. Something which I think we should just mention before we before we go into uh, to our insider tip section is that of course this is all about allowing the customer to ask the question where they are when they want to ask the question. We're not forcing them to pick up the phone. We're not forcing them to go and open an email browser. They can do it right there on the website. Which of course, I guess brings us into the world of social media queries as well. Should we treat those in the same ways as we choose live chat? Do we use different people to do it? Are they still a huge opportunity to to convert more? I mean, the same people will be able to do it. It's all the same questions. But if you're, um, and this works for organic posts as well, um, and Facebook Messenger, 
Um, and we can pull all of that into the same inbox. So there's no reason not to connect Facebook and, and Instagram. But but let's play. We, we, we've drank the, the Kool-Aid, Chloe. Let's, let, let's get to <laughs> preaching here. Uh, so you're a merchant. The, the low ad costs that we saw in April and May have gone. They're, they're, those days are long gone. We're already seeing BFCM 2019 numbers. So you're spending a lot of money to get your ads in front of the right person. Somebody stops scrolling on their Instagram feed. They stop looking at delicious barbecue ribs and see your, your product. They look at it. Maybe they click through to the website. It doesn't quite answer the questions. I find the Instagram ad browser really janky. So I ask a quick question. Hey, if I order this to Canada, am I going to have to pay import duties? Or do you still have this in stock? I couldn't find it on the website. And open anyone who's listening right now, pot, just listen, uh, open up Instagram and scroll to the first ad and see how many uh, ads you have to scroll through to find a purchase intent question being asked in the comments. So you've done all of this work to get your ad in front of the right person to get them to ask a question. I don't know, are you gonna stand around with your hands in your pockets twiddling your thumbs? We're gonna say, yeah, absolutely. You know what, we cover all duties and it offer free shipping worldwide. Give them that notification that acts like free marketing or sit and around with your hands in your pockets. So I, I appreciate the softball question, Chloe. Whenever I tell anyone that, it's always like, oh, yeah, I guess there is more to add than just, just setting it up for CBO. Um, but it's just such a great hack to, to go and you'll be shocked at how many brands, and especially I imagine most of the listeners are, are competing against larger brands. They just ignore their customers or they use corporate jargon. And having a true brand voice in your, in your ads that reflects your product language is just spot on and a super easy way to, to enhance that. Yeah, there is nothing sadder in the world of Facebook and Instagram ads than an a, an ad that's had like a hundred odd likes, twenty comments, and not one reply to a single comment. It's like you're giving money away. People want to talk to you. But but so so we give a little carrot. We we give a little, a little short rib. Let's give some stick. So your ads will go down. And there was a brand here in Canada that um, they collaborated with the head coach of the Maple Leafs at the, at the, the time, Mike Babcock. They released Mike uh, Bab socks to raise money for mental health and they just way oversold. So everyone was saying, hey, uh, where are my socks? I ordered from you guys or a scam. It's two months ago. And they're still running ads on this. So now not only are, are you not responding to people who are engaging, you have one voice, yours, saying come buy our stuff and 30 voices saying don't buy it. But if you had positively had a, a macro, a can response to it and say, hey, thanks so much for your support. Yes, we're shipping. We're totally oversold. But the good news is we're taking pre-orders and we've been able to get our costs down with our supplier to donate even more money to mental health. It's the exact same situation. It would, one sentence is a, is a world of different when it com- difference when it comes to your conversion rate. Exactly. And that, guys, is, is why customer service and live chat is such an important part of improving your conversion rates. Well, look, Lucas, we are now going to pause for a reminder of our sponsors, and then we're going to be talking about the wider world of improving conversion rates. It's safe to say that most of us have been doing more shopping online lately. And if you're an e-commerce brand, that means you might be seeing more first-time customers. But once they've made that first purchase, how do you keep them coming back? Well, that's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the ultimate email and SMS marketing platform for e-commerce brands. It gives you the tools to build your contact list, send memorable emails, automate key messages and more. Way, way more. Whether you're launching a new business or taking your brand to the next level, Klaviyo can help you get growing faster. And it's free to get started. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan to create your free account. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Ah, oh, Clavio. I've been on Clavio since 2015. Um, I have. I, it's funny. I share this uh, with them. Clavio, uh, made for e-commerce. If you like gorgeous and you're not on Clavio, you'll like Clavio. If you like Clavio and you're not on gorgeous, the best description I have of us is that it's Clavio for customer support. Oh, I love it. So, yeah, Lucas, we love us. I'll read in there for gorgeous as well. <laughs> I love it. So far, we've gone deep into live chat. Now you get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole world of improving conversion rates. So, for the following questions, your answers can be anything to do with improving conversion rates, which of course does include live chat. So, Lucas, you ready for these? Well, I am. 
All right, let's start with improving conversion rates, newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to start caring about improving their conversion rates, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? So very early on, be as close to your customers as you can until you've answered every single question and you know what they're going to ask. Um, you can be reactive and wait for them to, to chat into your website or send you an email, or you can ask them and engage. And so what you can do is, here's a, a great plug for the sponsor, Clavio. Use your Clavio email, um, and it doesn't have to be Clavio. If you're just starting out and using using another tool like Privy um, to keep everything in one roof, it'll work just just as well as well there. Um, but have that email, have a call to action, and maybe you just do it like a newsletter or as part of your unsubscribe or um, your cart abandonment flow or even a browse abandonment flow or even a welcome series. Maybe in that fourth email that you're welcome series, you say, hey, quick question for you. We shared our story. We, we showed you our products. We showed you a few reviews, but you didn't purchase. Why not? Just respond to this email and let, let me as a founder know what I can do to improve my company. And you'll be shocked at that feedback that you get from your customers. And you can um, segment all of that in Gorgeous. And you'll be shocked what you find out. It could be something related to not having a live chat on your website. It could be because you don't take PayPal. Um, who knows? But then respond to them one-to-one -one in Gorgeous quickly and send them a, a draft order of if they say that they do want to make a purchase or, you know what, I, I don't trust it. Uh, I'm not comfortable. You can say, well, cool. Here, you know what? Tell me what you want and I'll send you a secure payment link and then send them to uh, the payment processing PCI compliance that, that it go through. So most most likely Shopify payments. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now, once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve conversion rates on websites? I have two philosophies. If it's bad, just fix what you can quickly. Don't spend a ton of time trying to fix something that's garbage. It might just suck. Don't, don't, get, don't follow the negative. If it's easy to fix because the link is broken, fix it. Um, but if it's low enough to bring your attention to it, do a quick investigation and double down on what really works. If your customer is like a free product over $50, don't worry about a sale. Just hammer that home more. You're probably not communicating your offer enough to the people seeing it and find more people like them to share it with. Excellent advice. Okay. It's impossible to improve our marketing unless we're monitoring the performance, but the list of stuff we could monitor can be overwhelming. So what for you is the number one improving conversion rates KPI? Uh, I mean, first of all, revenue, just track revenue and look for any spikes. Um, if you're unsure about live chat, because maybe live chat really isn't for you. I can come on here and spread the gospel all that I want, but but you never know unless you test and you have that data. Run an initial campaign of, say, 500 chats with customers. So or run it for two or three weeks and then just track that cohort to see, did we get sales we wouldn't have gotten otherwise? Because ultimately, that's the mark. And finally, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for in terms of our conversion rates? I'm, I'm going to cop out and say, with everything that's going on, being able to be flexible and fast um, is going to be a competitive advantage. You, you didn't get it tattooed what was working 18 months ago. Look for what's evolving and, and changing. Just, uh, I mean, we're recording this now. COVID cases in Ontario are, are going up. We don't know what's going to happen. If you think of everything that happened in 2020 already, the only thing that worked was, or not the only thing that worked, but but a huge advantage was being flexible. And I just think that the the customers' expectations are constantly looking for faster, freer, um, and just more more flexibility. So just stay flexible and stay lean even as you you scale. I think flexibility is the perfect crystal ball piece of advice. I don't know, I don't think that's a cop out at all because that's you know, who knows? Who knows what the next couple of months and, and the next year is gonna bring. Well look, Lucas, we are nearly at the end of the show. So could you please let the note the listeners know where they can find you and Gorgeous on the web and social media, including how they can take advantage of that buying out if they're going Oh, I hate my live chat software. I need to improve. Um, and also, could you could you spell gorgeous for us, please? Uh, but yeah, so come find us out if you search gorgeous. It's gorgeous like the Plato philosopher, not my gorgeous good looks, and, uh, which which you can't see because we, we didn't record the video, Chloe. But uh, gorgeous like the philosopher, G O R G I A S dot com. Uh, just book a demo with the sales team. We try to be flexible. We know that you make it easy for your customers to buy. We want to make it easy for you uh, to, to buy or try gorgeous. Um, gorgeous IO on social media. You can find me, Walker Lucas, on Twitter. If you just Google Lucas Walker Gorgeous, 
I come up and the company comes up and her podcast comes up, that's probably the easiest is just Google Lucas Walker Gorgeous. And if you're talking to the sales team, you send me a message, or if you use the Gorgeous live chat, just say that you heard us on the Keep Optimizing podcast with, with Chloe, uh, you heard Lucas on the podcast, but please mention the Keep Optimizing podcast so we can give Chloe the credit that she deserves and attribute the sale just like you want to attribute yours. Um, yeah, just, just let us know, shoot me a DM. My, my, my stuff is open. Uh, I give up my cell phone like candy, which maybe I should stop doing, but it's 416-388-4470. Send me a text. Uh, use the live chat on the website. Uh, if you go to gorgeous.com and of course we're in the Shopify app store as well. Shopify plus app store. We're actually the first Shopify plus certified help desk app. Congrats. That's Thank very you. cool. Thank you. We, we've had a couple more keep up with us now, but we were, uh, we were number one. Love it. Well, look, Lucas, thank you so much for being on the Keep Optimizing podcast today and for being so generous sharing your expertise with us. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. And uh, and I hope we've inspired some more of the, of the listeners to take control of their customer service activity and turn it into a revenue driving area. So, um, so thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Chloe. Well, there we covered a lot of different aspects of live chat, customer service, and how they're not just that cost center, that thing you have to do, but they're a really core and important way, both on helping each individual customer to place their order, but also to learn lessons that you can use to improve the overall structure of your website, the information you're giving out there in order to get uh, more sales, more conversions, and thus improve the performance of all your, your marketing activity. Now, you can get the links to everything we discussed today, the full transcript of this episode, important notes, and much, much more at keepoptimizing.com, where you'll see a link to our show notes, and then you'll find uh, this particular episode. Now, as part of my mission to help you improve your marketing, we're bringing together all the guests from our four Improving Conversion Rates episodes for a live Q&A webinar on the 7th of October. Now, technically, Lucas isn't going to be joining us, but his colleague Louis will be. So live chat is going to be covered. And if you've got questions about how to maximize the potential of your live chat, then the webinar is the perfect place for you to get those questions answered. Sign up at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S not a Z, remember. And if you're listening to this after the webinar happens, so after the 7th of October, then don't worry, you can still catch the replay. Just head to keepoptimizing.com where you'll find links to get your hands on that. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. Our whole set of episodes about improving conversion rates is now live, so please do go and have a binge of them all. Next Wednesday, we're doing something very special. Um, I've brought eight of my favorite e-commerce experts together to provide their top tips for a successful Black Friday, Cyber Monday 2020. It's all recorded, so I can promise you it's an awesome episode. There are a lot of things that can be put in place pretty easily that will help you improve your performance this peak season. So that's our next episode coming out next Wednesday. You're going to get nine tips in total because I've added one of my own too. So you'll get those eight uh, of my favourite e-commerce experts giving you their tips, plus you've got mine as well. To make sure you don't miss that, make sure you've subscribed to the Keep Optimising podcast on whatever your preferred podcast app is, so Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it is you choose to listen, and that you've joined our email list, which you can do via the website. Then in October, so in two weeks time now, we'll be starting our next Marketing Masterclass. And we're going to be talking about that huge topic that is advertising. We're going to be talking about Facebook, talking Instagram, talking Google Shopping. Yes, we are covering them all. Now, if you know someone who's particularly interested in improving their e-commerce marketing performance at the moment, please do let them know about the Keep Optimizing podcast, because this show exists to help you and them improve their marketing. So it would be awesome from my perspective if you could spread the word, because then we can just keep helping ever more people. Now, have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.